It's like I watch you live once a month and my sleep schedule is well and truly fucked. Much love from Ireland. Blake, thank you for that. Appreciate you. Sorry your sleep schedule is so fucked. Happens, bro. Mine is a little off as of today. Last night, I couldn't sleep. So I woke up tired and then I had a big nap in the middle of the day. And I think after this stream, it's gonna be hard for me to go to bed. I have to fucking nip this in the bud because this is, this is how bad cycles start. I finally got some blackout curtains after you mentioned them and my sleeping is much better. Thank you, Big A. Yes! Yes! I'm not fucking around about this. I believe. I believe in everything I talked about for sleep. If you do the big holy trinity, blackout curtains or eye mask or both, that's one, just, just lack of light. Number two, no phone in the bed. And number three, try to have some sort of scheduled time. The fucking improvements in your life, you will notice immediately. No phone in bed is crazy. I know, I know it's crazy. It's tough. <laughs> what I do sometimes, <laughs> I'll just be honest with you, I've had a pretty strict no phone rule for a good amount of time now, but like, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not any less phone addicted. I'm a regular person. I'll fucking scroll YouTube shows or whatever. Sometimes I'll be laying in bed. I'll have my phone literally on the floor outside of the room and then I'll get up. <laughs> I'll go out and I'll just stand outside the door of my bedroom and like scroll YouTube shorts or something. <laughs> I won't put it in the bed. YouTube shorts actively dissolve my brain. I 100% agree. I do this whole thing in predictions about how the evidence is now overwhelmingly clear that this shit truly rots your brain. <laughs> we all know it, right? It, it actually, it rots your brain. Constantly using short form content, it makes your brain so ready to disengage in the first three seconds of any activity. I noticed today that music feels so long now because of short form media. <laughs> That's crazy. Three minute song. I'm not making fun of you because you're telling the truth in that uh, the length of songs has dropped dramatically since the rise of TikTok as the new radio. TikTok is like the number one music discovery platform and the length of songs is is responding. Songs are closer, way closer to two minutes uh, than they ever have been. And they're, they're getting closer than that. So watching a full movie with TikTok brains is challenging. And I don't think I have full TikTok brains. So maybe even more rotted Zoomers or God forbid Jen Alpha can tell me. But like the example that I would give is like, occasionally you watch a movie and there's a there's a slow part and you get the urge like, check my phone, huh? <laughs> and I can only imagine that your definition of slow part, if you're more brain rotted than me, is like, is really high and like really low. I mean, you're, the bar for slow part can be anything. But like, if I'm watching a movie and there's a slow part, I feel like I, I, I'm like, eh, pop the phone out, you know? And I think I'm like, why am I doing that? I could just wait. Bro, I'm on the phone from the opening scenes. <laughs> You're fucking rotted, bro. Straight up opening scenes. That is cooked. Bro, when the Paramount stars circle the mountain, it's too boring. <laughs> I'm actively trying to do boring stuff that isn't actively engaging to improve my attention span. I think that's cool. I think that's cool. I don't know, it's like a muscle. You can work it out. You can get better at it. The best thing I feel about is reading. I feel like reading is like the last thing holding me to the world, actually. <laughs> I think being a streamer rots your brain. I legitimately, I believe that. Uh, I can just tell the difference between streaming and like working at NVIDIA. If I didn't read, I think it would, I think that's the thing that tethers me to reality. <laughs> I feel like I have to have my daily reading. Otherwise, like, I, I don't know. I feel like my brain would actually fucking rot out my ear. Ludwig says the majority of his time not streaming, he's watching streams. He's totally brain rotted. Ludwig is deeply brain rotted. I forget. I asked you guys recently about if you've watched four hours of YouTube shorts. I never finished that story. That's because Ludwig told me that's what he did. Ludwig was like, yeah, bro. I watched four hours straight of YouTube shorts. And I was like, bro, that's cooked. NL has the other perspective. I appreciate NL. What what is his take? Does he agree or disagree? He says keeping new new bits for stream makes his brain less rotted. Is he saying it in like an old person playing Sudoku way? <laughs> I disagree with him. I just think I feel like I feel like being a shirt. Like for example, you know, for some of his bits he has to do, he has to read a lot of social media. So it's like, all right, that's a big part of it. So like a lot of your time is either on stream making content where you're like constantly doing this, interacting with short form chat, or you're reading social media to get little bit like. I think those things rot your brain. I think Jordan Lyon has a massive brain that is probably like genetically more rot proof than the average person. And he has like a normal regular life. So I think he's, a, he's an exception. I think in general streaming rots your brain. I think it's the general act of being plugged in the internet more than you probably would like. Like more than I was when I worked at NVIDIA, right? I, I just feel like I'm more online. I feel like it does slowly but surely rot my attention span a little bit. Also like the general sense of like, this is boring, let's do something else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I used to be more comfortable in boredom before I became a streamer. That's what I'll say. And I don't think, I don't think we have it that bad. Like, I don't think this stream is like, 
I show speed or something and I have to fucking stick a firecracker up my ass. <laughs> like, I don't think it's that crazy, but it's more than it used to be. So I'm no I noticed the difference. Boredom used to be a part of life, but now it's something people can't stand. Yeah, that's what I think. I think that is the ultimate, if I had to boil it down, that is my ultimate definition of brain rot is like an inability to tolerate boredom. And now I think it's gotten to a point for the most extreme examples where they can't tolerate it even for a second. Being bored for an hour is different. I was like, oh my God, I can't, I can't fucking do this. I'm bored. But like people can't tolerate it for now like microseconds. Like if you're micro bored, you have to go to like, you're almost like a, it's like an IRL swipe. That's what brain rot is to me. Bro, I sat and stared at a wall for two hours yesterday and it helped me super focus. <laughs> You're a psycho. Your plan to get your brain back on track is to fucking stare at a wall for two hours? Do you understand that looks, from the outside, it looks like you've gone crazy? You, perhaps there's a middle ground between getting locked in watching paint dry? I guess desperate times call for desperate measures. You do what you gotta do. I've told this story, but like, I do remember, this is back when I lived in SF. I was living alone. Ari was not there. I don't know, maybe it was Ari was in Japan or on a trip or something or gone for a long time, like over a month. And I was trying to like read a book a day and we had an empty room, white room, just carpet, one lamp. And I would like lock myself in that room and not let myself leave until I read the book. <laughs> I was on a real Sigma grind set. I remember like, you know, I like to read, but like by the end of it, I was shaking. I was like literally like rocking back and forth. Not, I couldn't focus on it. <laughs> I was like, just, ah, uh, just like, you know, just generally uncomfortable. Like, because there's a limit, there's a line, you know, it's like too far. You see the wall, that's what I'm saying. The wall guy is what that reminds me of. It's like, I don't think you should do that. You do some crazy shit. I think one of the craziest shit I did that my coworkers called me out on in the NVIDIA office, there's this big open plan kitchen with all these stations that have like, like a sandwich station and like a Indian station. And like, you know, they have chefs there and they're all free. It was crazy. I mean, it, NVIDIA treats workers right, bro. That's like insane. I would go, I would get a bowl. I would go to the salad station and I would fill the bowl up to the brim, piling over the top with raw broccoli, raw cauliflower, like raw kidney beans. I would put no dressing on it. <laughs> it would just be piled high with like vegetables. And then I would sit down with a fork and I would start crunching it. <sighs> I'm not even a vegetarian, but I'm not a vegetarian. I just get on these weird kicks sometimes. And I was like, if I just turn my brain off and eat this bowl every day, I'll be healthy <laughs> and I can do whatever I want. And that's what I would do. I would just fucking sit down and I would <sighs> just eat that fucking whole bowl. It was really good for me, I think. And then like, you know, I'd get home and eat a pizza or something. <laughs> It wasn't like I had a plan, bro. I was just like, I have no access to this stuff at home. Like I'm never gonna go out to the fucking grocery shopping, get a huge variety of vegetables, you know, package it, put it all together, put it together. You know, I'm never gonna do that. So like, while I have this opportunity, why don't I just eat it all right here? And then I'm just grinding health. <laughs> My coworkers thought it was wild, bro. Cause I'd sit down, like we're all at the lunch table, we're eating together, shooting the shit, talking about things. Like, you know, Mike's next to me eating a sandwich and I'm just like, <laughs> like my fucking 28th broccoli spear crunching through it. It takes a long time to eat that much with no dressing either. You just do do. A lot of my socialization is tied to gaming with my friends while chatting on Discord. So I have to choose between brain rot or social isolation. See, the thing is, I don't think gaming is so brain rotty. I don't think playing games with friends is brain rot. What I think is brain rot specifically, I think what's different now post 2010 than pre 2010 is like, push notifications, algorithmic infinite scrolling feeds, and recently post, you know, 2020 really, is like algorithmic short form content that you can just blitz your mind away and training your brain on, on like a fucking crack addicted rat scale, check out the second you're bored. That's what I'm talking about, is the, is, is the fucking cut and release the second you're bored. Like you don't give anything a chance because uh, I think that's what it is. I think that's what uh, brain rot is. Now, gaming is changing, right? Because it has loot box, it has dailies, it has gambling. Yeah, exactly, that's a great point. Speaking of brain rot, I got this recommended to me. Thanks for fucking my algorithm up. Try, usually it's like fucking business content that I wanna watch to learn a thing or two. No, I got this. Hello, potion seller. I am going into battle and I want your strongest <laughs> potions. My potions would kill you, traveler. You cannot handle my potions. <laughs> potion seller, enough of these games. I'm going into battle. And I need your strongest potion. This had another million views! My strongest potions will kill you, Traveler. You're a rascal with no respect for knights. You can't handle my strongest potions. Potion. Even the fucking trailer's too long! Two minutes too long for you sounds like brain rot? No, it is not brain rot to not watch Potion Seller twice. <laughs> Don't try to fucking reverse Uno card me. 
It is not Bray Wyatt to sit there and absorb fucking a guy saying potion seller back and forth for the fucking hundredth time. That's not brain rot. That's that's a smart decision. That's brain iron. That's brain steel.